module 2 design of spar straight and helical bevel and warp gears and this is lecture number 9 and in this lecture we shall learn about cross helical gear and this is part 1. This lecture will cover introduction to crossed axis helical gear, definition and basic theory, direction of helix angles, pitch circle diameters and center distance, gear ratio, speed ratio and pitch circle diameter ratio and their relations and finally, we will uh, solve a problem with 90 degree crossed helical gears so that means, shafts are at 90 degree. Now, let a helical pinion having teeth number Z p and helix angle beta p which is left hand as we see in the figure left hand side 3 D view, the top one is the pinion and bottom one is the gear. It is meeting with the gear which is at the bottom of having teeth number Z g and helix angle beta g this is also left hand as shown in the illustration. Now, if you look into the right hand side figure that is the geometric view of that, in that figure it is shown the pinion at the top. So, this is the pinion So, this is the pinion and this is the pinion shaft okay. and it is having the helix angle beta p left hand of this this much. Okay. Uh, you, you, you see this is, this is you have to recognize as that this teeth whatever the meshing teeth is shown at the bottom if we consider at the top it is in this directions. So, that will be left hand that that visualization that understanding should be very clear. Now, this is meeting with the gear which is this one and its shaft axis is here and it is having the uh, beta g the helix angle that is also left hand. If we here the tooth uh, mating tooth is shown that is on the gear it is at the top. So, this will be the left hand. Here if we look into the left hand side one can visualize this. Okay. Now, this let us consider this is rotating the direction is not shown it is if we consider the pinion it is rotating like this from this side from the right hand side if you look it is rotating in the anticlockwise directions. So, the pitch line velocity will be V p uh, of the pinion and for the gear uh, it is moving in this directions that will be V z. Now, if we draw a line perpendicular at the midpoint of the gears and pinion a perpendicular to the teeth in mesh that is on that line, then we will get this is the common velocity normal velocity in this directions and as well it will have a velocity also in this directions which can be further resolved into the on the on other directions also. Anyway, this is the geometric figure of the crossed helical gear. Now, we call crossed it can also be called or it is called that 
non parallel shaft helix hang helic helical gear if we normally say then we will consider the two parallel shaft and the power is being transmitted from one shaft to other through the teeth spar gear teeth which is helical but once we call cross helical gear then we have to consider that these two shafts are neither intersecting um, and not uh, are parallel okay so here um, this angle is given it is not even uh, 90 degree it is some angle is there so we shall once we mean that cross helical gear it will mean the non parallel shaft and for that the helix angle to be in the same direction of both the pinion and gear okay now if we calculate their each circle diameters then pinion pitch circle diameters which which is designated as d p p the subscript p first p stands for the pitch circle second p stands for the pinion that is the number of teeth into p f p by pi whereas p f p is the face pitch face pitch means if we consider the pitch along the surface of the gear or surface of the pinion in this case p f p is the face pitch of the pinion that is that will be number of teeth into the normal pitch divided by cos of the helix angle so this relation becomes dpp is equal to zp pn by pi cos beta p similarly the pitch circle diameter of the gear is expressed by zg into normal pitch divided by pi into cos of helix angle of the gear here as already told that pfp and pfg are the face pitches of pinion and gear respectively and pn is the normal pitch in the normal directions okay so one pitch we we, we are measuring say for example in this case the um, pitch is like this if we measure the pitch say this helix is shown in this direction on the gears so this is our face pitch and normal pitch will be in this directions sorry this this will be the face pitch and if we consider the normal that will be the normal pitch p n normal pitch which is given by the relations what we have already discussed okay as pinion and gear are mating they have common normal pitch has to be and therefore the module also same therefore the center distance can be expressed as a c h the center distance the ch stands for cross helical is pitch circle diameter of pinion and pitch circle diameter of giver summation of that divided by 2 which can be expressed as normal pitch divided by 2 pi whole into into whole uh, the zp by uh, teeth number of pinion divided by cos of helix angle of the pinion plus teeth number of gear divided by cos of helix angle of the gear. Let the pitch line velocity of pinion and gear be v p and v g what already explained respectively the common velocity v n normal to the mating teeth 
surface opinion and gear is expressed as V n is equal to V p cos beta p uh, that is, is equal to V g cos beta g. This can be visualized from the figure, the left hand side figure. Therefore, V g can be expressed as cos of helix angle of pinion divided by cos of helix angle of gear into pitch line velocity of the pinion that is from this relation. Therefore, in next page what we do the we estimate the angular velocity omega p is the angular speed of the pinion uh, which is expressed as twice into pitch line velocity of the pinion divided by the pitch circle diameter of the pinion. Similarly, omega g that is the angular speed of the gear can be expressed by twice into pitch line velocity of the gear divided by pitch circle diameter of the gear which is equal to if we substitute the values twice into cos beta p divided by d p g into cos beta g into v p. Okay. So, from there we can find the velocity ratio that is in this case we have considered the velocity ratio is equal to the angular speed of the pinion divided by angular speed of the gear which can be expressed by d p g cos beta g divided by d p p cos beta p that is from the uh, relations already we have derived. Okay. Now, if we substitute the expression of d p p and d p g what we already we have derived then the relation becomes omega p by omega g is equal to tth number of gear into normal pitch divided by pi into cos of helix angle of gear whole divided by tth number of pinion into normal pitch divided by pi into cos of helix angle of pinion whole into that ratio into cos of helix angle of gear divided by cos of helix angle of pinion. If we equate further which will become omega p by omega g is equal to tth number of gears divided by tth number of pinion. Just keep in mind that pinion is smaller than gear in most of the cases then omega p will be higher than the omega g and as well the tth number of gear will be higher than tth number of pinion. So, these relations you can easily understand. Now, in case of parallel shaft and in case of crossed helical shaft the speed ratio is directly the ratio of tth numbers whether it is uh, speed of gear divided by speed of pinion or vice versa that will be always the respective tth number of the gears reciprocate of that. Okay. However, if we express this in terms of diameter of the gears then the relations will be omega p divided by omega g is equal to diameter of pitch circle diameter of gears into cos of helix angle of the gear divided by pitch circle diameter of the pinion into cos of helix angle of beta p. That means, this helix angle must be expressed. Now, if we consider these are parallel shaft then definitely cos beta g is equal to cos beta p. So, this relation will then directly will become the ratio of the diameters it's cos 
terms cos of Selig's angle term will simply vanish. Hmm? Okay. Here again I repeat that in case of cross helical gear or non parallel shaft um, gears, the angles are different, helix angle are different, not only that their directions are also same. If it is pinion is left hand, then it will be left hand for gear also. Whereas, in case of parallel shaft, this helix angle if one is right hand, other will be left hand and vice versa. Okay. That we should keep in mind, their magnitude will be same also in case of parallel shaft. Now, the velocity ratio of the gear and pinion what already we have derived W p by W g is teeth number of gear divided by teeth number of pinion depends on the number of teeth and independent of helix angles and diameters. Now, expressing the teeth or reduction ratio, now here one thing we should remember when we mean the gear ratio that might be either the ratio of pinion by gear or gear by pinion we have to mention it. But a normal case if we mention a reduction ratio which is also uh, commonly used used term in that case normally the it is the ratio of which is speed is being reduced torque being in increased this is normal case and in that case the ratio e will be number of teeth of the gear divided by number of teeth of the pinion. Now, that we have taken as 1 by lambda and this means that lambda is equal to number of teeth divided by uh, number of teeth of pinion divided by number of teeth of gear. This ratio we should remember. Okay. Then we substitute this ratio in uh, uh, the formula al already which, if, which we have derived for the center distance A C H. So, this becomes lambda by cos of helix angle of pinion plus 1 by cos of helix angle of the gear that must be equal to twice pi A into C H that is the center distance divided by teeth number of gear into the circular pitch that means, Z p we have eliminated by the ratio lambda. So, now this is this formula is expressed in terms of number of teeth of the gear and the gear ratio lambda and the helix angle. Then if we would like to design such gears normally what we will find that the angle of beta p I mean helix angle of gear plus helix angle of pinion that is mentioned. Say for example, if you look into the right side figure say this angle will be defined because we have the drive the prime mover input from one side output from the other sides their angle is such that we have to define this angle that is summation of beta p and beta g uh, according to their position. So, this will be defined and then also what will be the reduction ratio in this case reduction ratio will be 1 by lambda that will be given and also center distance because center distance will mean that the distance between the input and output shaft axis. So, this will be mentioned and then Z g the number of teeth of the gear and suitable standard module circular pitch 
we have to choose. And finally, values of the helix angle of pinion and the helix angle of gear are found out by trial and error to solve the equations. Because if you look into this uh, equation that which is given into right hand side that we do not know what should be the angle of bit uh, what the angle is beta p and what the angle is beta g although we know their summation. Center distance is given and this p n we will select that means module we will select and this ratio is given. So, this from a single equation we cannot solve this. So, we have to use some trial and error method. Now, obviously, if this angle is not 90 degree in that case we have to start from the wild we have to take some value we have to adjust and then we have to see that whether it is matching and again we have to retake this value. So, it is cumbersome and tedious, but if it is 90 degree that means if one shaft is perpendicular to the other uh, although they are not intersecting in that case there might have solution that we will try. Now, the figure left hand side what we have shown that the pinion at the top and gear at the bottom they are at 90 degree. So, this means that input axis that is the axis of the pinion is parallel to the surface of the gear and axis of the gear shaft that is is parallel to the surface of the pinion surface parallel to the pinion surface ok. And this velocity diagram it will be same as before, but in this case beta p plus beta g summation of the helix angle of gear and pinion is equal to 90 degree. Let us see whether it can be solved analytically or some other methods easily. Now, here I would like to mention that this also give us the idea of worm gearing. This is exactly same as axis wide same as the worm gearing. So, we will later see that worm gearing is nothing but the 90 degree crossed helical gearing and solution goes in the same direction. Now, solution for the helical gear and pinion with right angle shaft axis can be obtained using Newton rapture numerical method as follows. Now, again I would say that although if you put 90 degree that final equation expression of the center distance will be further reduced to um, a single helix angle that can be done, but still there we cannot solve it directly analytical solution is not available. So, we can use Newton rapture numerical method and we can find the magnitude of the angles and other relations. Now, as beta p plus beta g is equal to 90 degree therefore, cos beta b p will be equal to cos of 90 degree minus beta g and which is nothing but sin beta g. Substituting in the expression of center distance we get lambda by sin of helix angle of gear plus 1 by cos of helix angle of gear whole equal to twice pi into center distance divided by tooth number of gear into circular pitch circular normal pitch. Now, here lambda is only related to 
the tth number of gears and beta p is equal to beta g, but what we find that uh, from this equation there is a possibility we can calculate the beta g. Still this equation cannot be solved analytically. Now, what we consider let this expression in the expression twice pi into center distance divided by tth number of gear into circular pitch normal circular pitch is equal to is expressed is by c and then the we also multiply both side by sin beta g then the equation becomes lambda plus tan of helix angle of beta g minus c into sin beta g and then as we are trying to solve this, then this we will express as a function of beta g. So, it is f beta g is equal to lambda plus tan beta g minus c sin beta g. Okay. Then we differentiate with respect to beta g that is the helix angle of gear. This we express as f dash of f, f dash beta g which is nothing but d by f beta g that function divided by d beta g which becomes 1 by cos square beta g minus c into cos beta g. So, this is a standard uh, differential uh, differentiating process. So, this I think you understand and then we consider h a incremental value is equal to what is uh, the Newton Raphson methods is equal to minus uh, function of beta g divided by that differential uh, differentiated function of beta g. Therefore, a closer value of now beta g that means, the first trial value after the second trial value beta g can now be improved to beta dash g which is equal to beta g plus h that incremental value okay. and uh, beta dash g which is the new root is considered as the new trial root for Newton Raphson method. Then we define a function of beta dash g is equal to lambda into tan beta g beta dash g minus c into sin beta g and for which the after differentiating it becomes f dash beta dash g is equal to d of function of beta dash g divided by d of beta dash g which becomes 1 by cos square beta g dash minus c into cos beta dash g the same way. And then we define the next incremental value h dash is equal to f beta dash g divided by f double dash beta g on this only single dash not a double dash. And uh, however, this we next consider a new angle beta double dash g is equal to beta dash g plus h dash. Okay. So, this is the new root which we are considering. The process is repeated till the new root uh, value becomes very close to the previous value. Usually it has been seen one or two iteration, one or two trial we will arrived into a an acceptable values for beta g and beta p. Now, the solution can be can best be revealed through an practical example. 
However, the initial trial value of beta g can be assessed from the chart of the c which is twice pi into center distance divided by tth number of gear into uh, circular pitch versus the helix angle of the gear for different value of lambda. Now, the graph will look like this. In this graph, what we have expressed in the y direction c is equal to twice by uh, pi into center distance divided by tth number of gear into the circular normal pitch which is may be 1, 2, 3, 4 usually it will be within this limit and helix angle we have considered 10 to 70 because totally if this is for 90 degree cross helical gear only. So, this chart in this chart beta g plus beta p is equal to 90 degree and normally this angle beta g will be within 70 degree or so. And we have plotted these lines for different lambda. Lambda we may be 1 where the teeth number of pinion and teeth number of gear are same and it may be as low as 0 0.05 which is at the bottom. Now, the problem what we have chosen a helical pinion and gear set with 90 degree sets have 15 and 58 involute teeth respectively. That means, pinion is having 15 teeth and gear is having 58 involute teeth, 20 degree involute teeth. The center distance is specified as 200 millimeter with normal module as 5 millimeter. Once we are expressing the normal module that means, circular pitch, normal circular pitch also defined because it is pi into module. Find the appropriate helix angle of the pinion and the gear and also what will be their pitch circle diameters that we have to calculate. Now, what we have taken that we have we first calculate the required parameters say given parameters are teeth number of pinion is 15, teeth number of gear is 58, module is 5 millimeter, center distance is 200 millimeter and BP plus BG that summation of helix angle is equal to 90 degree. And we have to find out the helix angles as well as, as, well as the circle diameters. Now, first we calculate C which becomes 1.38 for the just mind it this is for the module 5. We would like to restrict the center distance 200. Module 5 is good, but it can be varied that we will check. So, we get it is 1.38. Now, this we have the C 1.38 it is plotted here. Okay. So, this line will come over here because this ratio is 1.38 whereas, lambda is 0 0.258 which is not available in this chart, but we can extrapolate or interpolate. Now, this is not properly done, but still what we find that we are not getting any idea about the beta g because this two curve is not intersecting. One is straight line and this curve is not intersecting. That means, gear data is not suitable for 90 degree set. This means that if we would like to take pinion is 15 teeth, 
gear is 58 teeth, module is 5, 200 millimeter and 90 degree cross set helical gear, this solution is not possible. So, what we do now, we take the module 4, that means for the from the strength point of view maybe we have to um, take a better material, but it is still possible we can uh, have the solution with 4 millimeter module. Now, in that case the C we calculate 1.724, but C is not uh, because it is changing due to the change in module. In this case module has changed 4 millimeter. So, this value has increased to 1.724 which gives the straight lines here and the lambda curve was as it is because the gear ratio is not changed and what we find that there will be two points this curve is somehow uh, not placed properly it, it is somewhere here it will be if we uh, draw this curve it will come something like this. for the value 0.258 okay. and we get from these two points that means from this graph ultimately we will get that beta g may be taken as 24.5 degree or 41 degree. So, what we find the initial value of the beta g is 2.4.5 that is for the initial value for starting with the Newton Raphson methods. So, instead of guessing any value from this chart we can have it is 24.5 or it will be 41 degree it has two solutions and then uh, this means that ultimately beta g either will be very close to 24.5, I mean there will be two sets of solution. In one set the value of beta g will be very close to 24.5, in other case it will be very close to 41 degree. And we shall in the next lecture we, sh we will see that how the solution is available. So, ultimately this 5 millimeter was not possible, we have taken 4 millimeter and we will try the um, uh, Newton Raphson method with one value 24.5 and other value 41 degree. So, thank you.